Only specifics fly on the altar of prayer. Only specifics fly on the altar of prayer. Only specifics fly on the altar of prayer. No one's time shall be wasted this season. Welcome to Apostle TV. The message you're about to watch will definitely transform your life. Be blessed as you watch. With him, all things are possible. So, it doesn't require a pity. He's willing, he's able, he's ready. If you child the head of the prodigal son, had his own heads and he divided to them. He was in that house, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to do. The father was looking, he was looking. God needs to know what to do about your case. He needs to know about what exactly you know you need. Beginning with your spiritual need. Don't hide from your flesh. Tell him exactly what it is. And define your target. Even praying on time prayer, define your target. Define your target. The target for the year, before the half of the year, is minimum double number of home sales, both in terms of number of locations and attendance. Minimum double the size of every local assembly. So it's defined. Lift up your two hands. Ask God to keep this in your mind forever. Lord, keep this understanding in my mind that I will not work with you in futility. I will not labor in vain. Help me to constantly define what exactly I appear before you for. Help me to define the grace I'm looking for. Not just God and grace me. For what? What kind of grace are you looking for? Give me a man child. Hannah said, he said, yes, get, get a man child. Ask of me and I'll give you the heathen for an inheritance. The most part of the earth for your possession. No more religious prayer in my life. I want to pray as a city of the kingdom. Know what I'm asking for. Know that my father is able to do it. So help me, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you tonight, Jesus. Take all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be comfortably seated. Engaging the wonders of specific demands on our prayer altar. Either to you have asked me nothing specific. That's why you keep asking and asking and nothing seems to be happening. Ask me now. And you shall receive. And your joy may be full. You have asked me nothing. They are praying, they are praying instead of you have asked nothing. You have said nothing. But me who said nothing but cry. Jesus! Son of David! He knew his address. Have mercy! He said, what is the matter? He said, we don't know. He said, call him. What exactly are you looking for? No one's prayer altar will be barren again. Yeah. No one's prayer altar will be barren again. Elijah demanded for the double portion of the spirit upon Elijah and got it. Double. God, double. He said, you have asked a hard thing. I said, double. Double. Second Kings 2, 9 to 15. We can afford to be specific. He 
because they got over flesh and there's nothing too, too hard for him. There is nothing too hard for him. There is nothing too hard for him. Unto man this may be impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. It's never in short supply. He doesn't look for answers, he creates them. He creates answers. The king said to him, Nehemiah, what exactly do you request for? What are you asking for? He said, wait a minute, let me go and pray first. I made an impossible list that nobody, nobody should make of a king. The king said, look, I can see the hand of God upon you. He secured the hand of God on those items. He listed them one by one. And he got it. There is no kingdom agenda beyond God's capacity for delivery. All we need is to take our position in the pursuit of it. There is no divine agenda beyond God's capacity for delivery. All we need to do is to take appropriate position in the pursuit of it. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 15, Solomon said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and as with his arm fulfilled it. There is nothing God says that his hand cannot deliver. There is nothing God says that his hand cannot deliver. There is nothing God ever says that his hand cannot deliver. Hear what he says. I, the God of wonder, is visiting you, and he showed it. Within eight weeks, we were heavily visited. All the devils in here knew. Churches doubled supernaturally. And he went on and said, in the October of the year, and I'll be in your midst until you don't want me again. Oh, Jesus, we want to. Then keep doing what you should do. For me to keep doubling and redoubling and redoubling. So we kept doing it. And 2019, he planted 5,000 churches. Exactly twice, a little above where we were. 2020, he said he would still plant 20,000, 10,000 churches. How? He did. We remain on the prayer altar. Our faith kept on fire. What never happened between 1987? And 2015, I mean 20, 2018, happened in one year. There is nothing God says that the Son cannot deliver. Or we need to keep our faith alive and take our position in that agenda. Then like a dream of the night, boom, number of says, multiplied. At his word. Like a dream of the night, entered 83 nations in one year. We have been entering and entering and entering. We're only 67 nations. One year came and said, I'm going to... He said, enter 75 nations. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There is nothing God says that the Son cannot deliver. There's nothing God says about you that the Son cannot deliver. All you need is keep your faith alive and take your covenant position and jealously guard it. That's all you need. So it's still very much with us. It's still very much in our midst. It's still very, very much in our midst. And this year I said, look, here's my agenda. Double the size of every local assembly in this commission between now and the end of the first half of the year. No guesswork. 
Guess what hardly works in the kingdom. Guess what hardly works. John 5.30, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, so I judge. Guess what hardly works. You heard Moses saying, don't say the Lord. Don't say the Lord. Don't say the Lord. Don't say the Lord. Every action of Moses was triggered by don't say the Lord. No attempt to arrest him. It was too much for the gods of Egypt. And then it's a minimum twice number of WSF locations in every local assembly. Also before the end of the first half of this year. That is every cell will bat minimum one. Some super driven says will bat 10, depending on the position that each cell minister takes. Praise God. It's, you better be driven by it. Now, can I say this to you? Jesus taught us to pray. And here is what he said. As you pray, come worshiping me, or you don't have access. Let your first request be, thy kingdom come. Amen. You know what that means? Thy kingdom come means fulfill all your prophetic agenda for your church. That must be before you come. <laughs> and that includes explosive church growth. Micah chapter 4 verse 1 and 2, in the last days it shall come to pass. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 and 3, in the last days it shall come to pass. Explosive church growth, we see the end of this earth. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. All the proud shall we bow, all, all of them. All of them. They see just of the cardiac stuff. I'm coming to church. They say, Why? I say, I want to drop it. I'm tired. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. What? It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Sit down at my right hand and make the enemies a fool too. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Root out in the midst of the enemies. That's the church for you. That's the end time church for you. We'll be in command of the affairs of the earth. No matter the civilization, no matter the gang up of hell, watch it. He will not come until the church is reigning in power. Reigning in power. Until the church becomes the breadwinner of the world, he will not come. The kingdom come, then other things can follow. And in the same chapter 6, that's, that's chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, verse 33, he says, You seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things that others are dying to get. As outlined from verse 21 to 32, shall be given to you. All of them. He will decorate you beyond his decoration of Solomon. In terms of fortune. But he will do anything he will do as we mature in our engagement with him. And here when he changed, not doing when he happened. So you can't get on there without increasing the quality of your work with God. Taking his commandments seriously. Engaging genuinely with a true heart parting after God. We serve a territory taking God. And he has not changed. He has not changed and he will not change. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24, he said, Rise you up, take your journey, and pass over this river. Anon, behold, I've given you Sihon the Amorite, king of Hezbon and his land, begin to possess it and contend with them in battle. That's why we pray. We are contending with the opposition to deliver divine agenda. 
I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we engage on the prayer altar to stop the gates of hell from stopping the advancement of the church. And I hear what they said finally in verse 36. He said, From Aroa, which is by the brink of the river of Arnon, and from the city that is by the river, even unto Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us. The Lord, our God, delivered all into our hand. They contained and God delivered. They engaged the prayer water and God delivered. Ask of me, he said, and I'll give you the hidden one inheritance. And this is the most part of the earth for their possession. Sir, no church will ever taste growth without an effectual prayer water. No church, just like no woman will ever give birth without passing to the labor room. The labor room of prayer is the mystery behind supernatural church growth. The labor room of prayer is the mystery behind supernatural church growth. The labor room of prayer is the mystery behind supernatural church growth. Isaiah 66 and verse 7 and 8. Before she traversed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she would deliver a man child. Who has had such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth at once, uh, in one day, or a nation born at once? For as soon as Zion travelled, she bought supernatural growth. She travelled to bat supernatural growth. Every growing church, till Jesus will come, will be a praying church. Don't get tired. Take your position in it. And every growing church must remain a praying church to, to remain growing. To keep growing. Every growing church must be a praying church and every, I mean, must be a growing church and every growing church must remain a praying church to keep growing. No shortcut. Where prayer stops is where growth stops. Where prayer stops, it's where growth stops. Where kingdom advancement prayer stops in our lives, that's where our advancement stops. Come on now. It's a covenant keeping God. Why call me Lord, Lord without doing what I tell you to do? It was God who advanced Moses. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 6. It's the advancement for today. So when you commit to the advancement of his kingdom, you have committed him to your advancement. It's your turn. For endless advancement. From one realm of glory to another. Just keep what he says to do and keep doing them. The early church was birthed by prayer. They were in one accord in prayer at 114. They were in one accord praying Acts 2-1, then the Holy Ghost came. Amen. I mean, and then they continued daily in prayer, verse 42. And verse 46, they remained in one accord, the same chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles. One accord, they are prayer. They were in prayer, not that they were looking at themselves. They were in prayers. And Acts 5, Verse 12, they were in one according to Solomon's watch. Eruption of science. Now watch what happened. As chapter 2, 3,000 added to the church. As chapter 3, they were going to the temple in the hour of prayer. The outcome, at 4-4, 5,000 was added to the church. In Acts 5, multitudes were added to the church. At 6, they gave themselves over to prayer, who led to prayer, and then the disciples multiplied greatly. So if you look at growth trend, it was triggered and sustained by prayer. Triggered and sustained by prayer. And they were praying in the temple, my friend. Not in their houses. They were in the temple. So temple prayer continues. Don't confuse yourself with online. Temple prayer continues, it just comes. Temple prayer, I mean, there are people who don't have that opportunity by reason of their job. But don't play with God. Temple prayer, look, it's the devil's strategy to replace gathering of people with online nonsense. Some have lost their medicine and what they call it is the online church. 
Amen. You can't break six also. You check all of those things they were in the temple, in the temple, in the temple, in the temple, in the temple. Now they were doing that prayer daily in house to house, and I mean in the temple and from house to house. So the temple is primary. They were together praying. The Holy Ghost came. They were together praying, miracles began to happen. And it all began to grow. Will not be left behind. Will not be left behind. Can I tell you the wonder? God instituted covenant hour prayer in March and he came to visit for one double in May. He says the prayer pace before deliver the agenda. Can I hear your amen? That's what happens. In the precious name of Jesus, this kingdom priority lifestyle that has changed the life of many must change your own too. There's no concern of your life or my life that that strategy, that divine mystery cannot handle. There is not one. It's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. They were losing it and they say, hey, wait a minute. We can't go this way. We lose the fire. We lose our place. Let's appointment to look at what is our fears. But for us, we'll give ourselves who led to prayers to the ministry of the world. And then the church erupted into next levels. Jesus, we believe you. Double this church as you have said. And grace me to take my portion in it. This is what I believe you for. And then we are talking. Can I hear your email? It's your turn. Can I conclude with this? Look at this church. One thing. One thing only. Every other thing, forget. One thing only. There is no prayer you pray and others for somebody to be great and be small. <laughs> Jesus, confirm your word. Jesus, save the lost. Jesus, establish the lost. Prepare us for heaven. Keep us fit. Sanctify us. We are just driving that same agenda. And yet, you have not lacked anything. Your days of lack are over. Your days of want are over. Yeah. Your days of struggling for survival are over. Yeah. He said, make for me first and watch what I do with your life. And for three and a half years, she was feeding fat. You will never know farming. You will never know drought. Yeah. You will never know dry season. Yeah. You never suffer hunger. Yeah. You will never beg. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Question. Is it within God, God's capacity to double the size of the local assembly in this church in one month? Is it within his capacity? The one who created the world in six days and the fullness thereof, will he have a problem if you and I will take our position and obey him? I've called you, I've ordained you, go and bring forth fruit and ensure your fruits abide. Simple commandment. And then I bring you into favor. It will bring you to favor with me. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. It is a favor agenda. I'm to bring you into fortune. This is what to do to get in there. No one will rob you of your place in this fortune 2024 agenda. Yeah. He wants to do it, and he wants me and you and I to be beneficiaries of that agenda. You won't miss your place. And that man will not take your crown. In the name of Jesus. You will not miss your place. Yeah. Another man will not take your crown. Yeah. Every siege of misfortune will clear the way. Yeah. Because God will smile on you. Yeah. As you delight yourself in obeying him, he will smile on you. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. As a reminder, while we close, God said, mind my agenda. And I will take over your, your affairs. Mind my agenda. And I will take over your affairs. Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy. That for his righteous cause. Let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified. That take it pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Mind my agenda. And I will take over your affairs. 
He said, mind the agenda of my kingdom on earth and I'll take over your affairs in life. Mind the agenda of my kingdom on earth and I will take over your affairs in life. Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15. The word says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yet the said time is come. Because your servants favor the stones of Zion, the affairs of your kingdom, they are lost in it. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord as they behold my hand on your life, as I decorate you. Fearful favor. And all the, and all the kings of the earth, their glory. Favor that catches the attention of kings. Kings of the earth, let's go there. What's going on there? Some fellow you never believe will knock on your door this year. How are you doing it? Amen. Mind the agenda of my kingdom on earth and I will take over your affairs and life. Three, give me the priority place in your life and you will secure my priority attention that will lead to your enviable decoration. Watch. Give me the priority place in your life and you secure my priority attention that will lead to your enviable decoration in life. You have been faithful by a few things. Now have the authority over 10 cities. Enviable decoration. From one pound to 10 cities. Enviable decoration. Seek for the advancement of my kingdom in righteousness and it will be your launching path to a world of fortune. Seek first the advancement of my kingdom in righteousness and it will be your launching path to a world of fortune. Matthew 6.33 Don't sit, seek. Don't watch, seek. Don't wait. Seek. No one goes forward without taking steps. No one goes forward sitting down. No one goes forward waiting. You take steps to go forward. Make me first to secure your flourishing in hard times. First Kings 17, 13 to 16. Your church has never known hard times, so we never know if Jesus comes until we stop seeking him first. The widow of never knew, never knew hard time. All the situation were feeding fat, I believe, under the unending flour and on any cruise of oil. Make me first to secure your flourishing in hard times. 1 Kings 17, 13 to 16. Mind my own first, and I will take care of your own. Mind my own first, and I will take care of your own. Mind my own first, and I will take care of your own. Many mind the things of their own, and not the things that be of Jesus Christ. But you mind my own first. I'll take care of your own. Philippians 2, 21 and 22. <clears throat> For all seek their own, not the thing, the things that are Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, set your affection on things that are above. Mind my own first, and I'll take care of your own. Invest in my own first, and you never know dry seasons in life. We have left all, and we have followed thee. 
get set for a hundredfold or anything you have left, now in this time, in the world to come, life everlasting. Lift up your right hand to heaven. We are in a spiritual depression in season. Lift up your right hand and ask God, help me to line up with your agenda for my life. So I can secure my place in your Fortune 2024 agenda for me as a member of this household of faith. Help me, Jesus, to reposition spiritually. Let the fiery words of this moment live with me for life. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Now, in case you are here tonight and you are not born again yet, I'd like to pray with you before we take the communion. This thing is real. It's sweet on this side. Come over. No anky panky. No games. Come over. When the one is born again, none of these things apply to him. Someone that is there cannot seek anything. You are here tonight. You want to be spiritually alive. You want to come back on your feet spiritually. You want to be born again. You want to dedicate your life to Christ. Wherever you are in any of our viewing centers around the city of Lagos and Otter, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. Jesus, save my soul tonight. I'm dedicating my life to you tonight, Jesus. I'm dedicating my life to you tonight, Jesus. Stand to your feet. God bless you as you do. Stand to your feet and God bless you as you do. Jesus, save my soul tonight. I'm rededicating my life to you tonight. Whichever one you fall into, stand to your feet. And God bless you as you do. Everyone standing, please keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Let's save time. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. It's your turn for a change of story. Keep coming. Keep coming. Somebody else is standing on wherever you are. Keep coming. Keep coming. God has you in mind for tonight. He has set the stage for you tonight. Keep coming. No matter how far you may have gone, he will receive you back. Keep coming. It's your turn for a change of story. Keep coming. Don't let nothing stop you out there. Get on your feet and start coming. Get on your feet and start coming. In the name of Jesus. It applies to all of us. Zona Center, please approach the other area. The pastors are waiting there. It's your turn for a change of story. Thank you, Jesus. God is touching you somewhere. Join us now. Join us now. Join us now. He wants to write off your past. Grant you a brand new beginning. Come up now. Come up now if you are coming. Join us quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now, everyone in front, bow your heads, please. And lift up your right hand to heaven. That applies to all of us standing before the heart of the Lord. Across our viewing centers. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the thought that you rose again. To set me free from the power of sin. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart and then grace me to live the new life. By your grace, I shall serve you all the days of my life. And by your grace, I shall make heaven at the end of my journey. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Now, be blessed in the name of Jesus. I cover each of you that pray this prayer with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all satanic assaults in the name of Jesus. Welcome to the kingdom of light. Darkness will not overrun your life anymore. You are free at last, and you are free forever, in Jesus' name. Congratulations, congratulations.